Hey art lovers, it's Tristina Dietz Elms here and I wanted to wish you all a happy new year for 2019 and I'm going to take you on a little journey with me while I do some Chinese painting of happy new year and you can see in the back here I have the characters up on my iPad and I have some Chinese brushes and ink so come along with me and let's take a walk through the wild calligraphy side. Okay, let's start out by, here's Xinan Kuai Le, that means Happy New Year. And this is the more traditional characters. But what I wanted to show you also was that with the hand of the artist, you can interpret those characters in many different ways. So when we see um, that's one person's interpretation, this is another person's interpretation of what those characters can look like. Uh, let's see, is there another fun one here? Like that. So I'm going to take my hand of the artist and I'm going to create my own version of the characters. And I'm going to show you how I do that with, with some of these different brushes. And then I'm going to use some traditional black sumie uh, Japanese ink by Yatsutomo. And then this is also by Yatsutomo. This is a red ink and I like the way that they give it to you already in this little red or white ceramic. Then I also have here some of the Pebio India ink and I really like using this too. You get a heavy dark color. The Japanese ink is a little more, has a little more water in it and the India ink is a little thicker. So it just depends on how much soaking into your surface you want. Um, is your paper very absorbent or is your paper not so absorbent? So these different inks will sit on it in various ways. And then here's something else that I really like to play with. It's a fine line applicator and it has a needle nose tip here. So you can put inks or different kinds of fluid paint in here, acrylics, India inks, anything like that, and get some really interesting thin fine lines. So I'm gonna show you how I use that. And then this is a traditional water dispenser. So you'll see I put a little bit of water in there so that I'm able to do just a few drips at a time into the water container if I need a little more water to go with my ink. Um, and I'm gonna use a little water in this red one to start juicing it up and getting the color going on it. And then I have a couple of water containers, one to clean the brush and one to pick up some fresh water. And this is actually a magic surface that I can work on with the brushes and water in order to do my practice. And then underneath here is some Sumie calligraphy paper. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how I use, that's just rice paper. For okay, so you can see here I have my magic paper, which is kind of like a cloth, and this you only use water on. So I'm going to be using one of these brushes over here. I have brushes with different types of hair in them, and I'm going to pick my favorite goat hair brush and drip it in the water. There we go. So that's all we need is we just need it to get wet. Do you see there how it's starting to make, <laughs> make these spots on here? So just having a wet brush. And now looking at my characters, I'm gonna practice my characters in these squares. So let me go ahead and do one of these. Duke, duke. Here we are. This is Xin. And we still have a little bit more here to go. Whoop. So there we go. That's practicing on this magic paper. Now what's going to happen is in just a moment that is going to disappear. <laughs> just as it evaporates it will disappear which is fabulous. It, so that you could go ahead and just work on your characters over and over and over again. So here's the next one. So the idea is that you try to keep your characters approximately the same width like this. All right, and there's the next character, Nian. And then Kuai Le, let's try Kuai Le over here. 
Well, I'm do it over here, then you'll be able to see it a little bit better. And then like this. You can see I'm not holding the brush like you would hold a normal American paintbrush. Instead, you're holding it in between your fingers like this and holding it straight up. And then as you hold it straight up, then you move it and you're flicking your wrist like this to get the different types of brush strokes. You're not holding it like a pencil or like you might hold a brush that you would do with acrylic paint or oil paints. All right, so that was Zhi Nian Kuai Le. And so let's do Le as the next character. So I'll do that one. I need it just a little bit more wet because the character is a little bit bigger. So see how that one's already disappeared and I can go back over it here. And then we have this little guy. Boop. Boop. And again over here. And then there we go. So this is the way that I warm up for doing painting with regular ink is I just start out with water and get a feel for the brush. I can feel this brush is a little bit dry for what I want to do actually. So I'm going to grab another brush and try that one. I like to try the different sizes of brushes also so that I can see how wide the character is going to be. And then we've got Oops, which character am I on? This and this. Okay. So now I'm going to try a different brush that's a little bit wider. This is actually a brush that I got from Blick. And you see the hair is a little bit different and the it's a bamboo stalk. So I like when the brush comes to a point like that. So this is wet. Let's try Nian for a year. Uh, here we go. Boop, boop. Ah, I like the way this is holding the water better. There we go. So see, I can see that needs to go down a little bit further. So this is your opportunity to practice and play before you actually get to the paper. So now let's go with some real ink to the paper. Okay, so here we go. This is some Sumie calligraphy paper. What that is, is it's a Japanese rice paper that is ready for calligraphy or Chinese painting and Japanese painting. Now, the paper itself, you'll find if you have a very wet brush, it just soaks right through to the other side. So what I do is use a piece of felt. I use a black felt so it doesn't matter what color of ink I'm using, but that helps you in between the sheets to be sure that anything that goes through doesn't go through to the paper at the bottom of your pad. Now, there is a rough side to the paper and a smooth side to the paper, and it's your preference which side you like to paint on. I actually like to paint on both of them. It, they, the paint moves and spreads differently on the two sides. So in this case, doing the characters, I'm going to use the smooth side as it presents itself in the book. Now this is your Japanese Sumie ink by Yasutomo. And oh, here we go. I'm probably going to end up with black ink on my hands eventually, but I'm just going to pour a little bit of this out here because I don't need a lot to start. And there we go. And now let's use that same brush that I really liked the feel of this one. And the brush head is still a little bit wet, so that's good. You want your brush head damp to help it soak up the ink here. And now again, I'm going to practice on here. So Chinese characters don't go from left to right. They go top to bottom and right, um, right to left. So I'm just going to do top to bottom with these characters here. So you see already that it's different on the paper with the way that it's soaking in. So this is my first character.
Now this one should come down just a little bit more. There you go. First character, second character. So that was Xin. This is Nian. go and then I only had room for two there I'm using a bigger brush if I were using a smaller brush I could get smaller characters here so then we're gonna do Kwai Le so Kwai and you'll notice that I'm doing these characters in different orders so there's a particular progression you go from left to right on the progression of building your characters. So here I'm actually going to start in the middle just to give myself a nice reference point. And the same on the other side. And then we'll have a little one of these here. Now some of these characters are done top to bottom like this and some of them are done bottom to top. So you get different types of brush strokes or the different look on your brush strokes depending on the brush that you're using. Now I'm gonna do use a different size brush so you can see what that's like. This one's still wet. It's that goat hair brush from earlier. So here I'm gonna pick up some ink. This will give me a smaller character. So let's see if we can get it all on one line this time. So I'm just gonna go here and build the characters a little bit smaller because I have a smaller brush. Okay, so I got all four of them down because I'm using a little bit smaller and brush so that I'm able to make smaller brush strokes. So there we go. And now if I really wanted to loosen up, which I like to do when I do my calligraphy, is I just go ahead and work all over the paper. So regardless of um, keeping it in a particular format, so if I want to practice doing a character that's a little faster, then I might do that. Now one of the things I'm seeing with these brushes is, you see how it's getting dry? So I'm gonna get a little bit more water on there. Plus the more water you add, the more you're gonna get a beautiful gray color out of it. Plus the more the water plus the more the paint will spread. So you see how I'm getting more of a gray than a black? And the more water I add, the more gray it's going to be. But the wetter it is, that's what helps with having this. That's what helps with having this black felt underneath here. Okay, so that's doing the characters using the brushes like that. And now I'm gonna practice with some red. And what I do is I just tear these out and set them aside. And this becomes, for me, collage material to use in my mixed media artwork. So here we go with another sheet. And what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm going to use the red. So, and for the red, I'm gonna use a red brush. So you'll see that some of them are white, some of them are brown, and I have this nice red brush. Now I have the two waters, so I just dip this one in the clean water here. And this is the opportunity where you can take a little bit of this water from here and put it in there to juice this up. There we go, get the paint flowing. You can see I've used this one a lot. I'm already down near the bottom. Okay, I like the way this little brush comes to a point. So here we go.
Now the last thing is I want to show you the fine liner. So this it takes liquid paint and right now I have acrylic ink in here and you unscrew the top on it and the top has a needle in it. Think. So watch this. See how it gives you that beautiful fine line? So now I like to do characters with this very fine line and they come out really fun. It's a little more straight liney, but it's fun. And you can see more the direction of the characters that way. character over here. You can see how some of the paint comes out so you have to work kind of fast which is a good thing. There we go. Okay, so that gives you a more fun sort of stylized version of it and the faster the more you practice and the faster you go the more you're going to get characters that look like they're flowing a lot so for instance this one right here like that uh, let's do this part of this one and that's using this fine liner but if I take the brush again and go in here you just want to practice 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 so that you can begin to do these characters much more smoothly and they have a more stylized look to them so I hope you enjoyed that again this is work that you'll see end up in my collages thanks for coming along for this happy new year a little video and enjoy the process i hope you guys pick up some chinese brushes and some chinese paint and give this a try or japanese paint these brushes are available on my tracksartstudios.com website store and some of these paints are also available there like this sumo ink and then these fine line applicators are also available on there this paper is also available on the Tracksart Studios website. And that magic paper that I showed you before, oh my gosh, love that stuff, for your practice, is also on the website. So, Happy New Year, everybody. Hope your 2019 is happy, healthy, and abundantly wealthy.